welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Catherine and I'm the blonde in the air. I make videos about affordable luxury travel and also affordable luxury in the home. In today's video, I'm going to give you tips about how you can find activities and food for less. I'm really excited. This is part four of my four video series that I've been doing for the past few weeks. My previous videos were about what to do before you book your trip, how to find better priced flights, also better priced accommodations. And now today we're talking about food and activities. So let's begin. Number one, affordable luxury doesn't mean that every single activity you do on your trip has to be fancy. The best way to do this is to have balance. You can have a balance of free activities and also some paid activities, okay? And the paid activities can vary from something that's like $20 to maybe something that's 75, 100, 150, okay? And so to have a mixture of all of these will give you more well-rounded experience and also your pocket will be so happy that you didn't do all activities that were extremely expensive, okay? So some examples of free activities you can be doing is walking tours. In many cities you can find free tours by foot. This is in America. I also also think they're in Europe too but in Europe and other countries they have their own tours and you can look for it it is amazing I've been on so many of them um, throughout the world and I enjoy the quality of these tours they're phenomenal and if you enjoyed it you would give a small tip or big tip at the end I definitely recommend it as a great way to you know save some money but also have a great experience and learn about the place that you're visiting Another example of finding free activities is actually going to a website called Atlas Obscura. This website was a game changer in planning my vacations because I was able to find things that were more off the grid, really unique and cool that you really can't find on Google. These things are just strange some of them. I really recommend if you want to add some spice into your vacation. Now that we got the free things taken care of, if you want better prices on more expensive things, I will tell you about how to do that in the next tip. Number two, use Groupon to find cool activities that are priced for less on the website. This is awesome. I had so many great experiences that I've purchased from Groupon. For example, I went to Las Vegas a few years ago and with Groupon, I bought ATV tickets, okay? I bought that. I bought helicopter ride. When I went to LA, I booked um, a limo tour in a stretched Ferrari. These are like so cool. I would have never known about the stretch Ferrari if it wasn't for Groupon and also the same with the ATV tours and the helicopter ride. I wouldn't have known that's actually a thing I should be doing if I didn't look it on Groupon. The prices were so good. It was amazing. I really love Groupon for that and also you can be earning so many points and miles if you if you remember from my previous video, you probably don't have a credit card that I told you about in tip number two, okay? You're gonna use that credit card that earns you points uh, and miles, and you're gonna use it and spend it on your online purchase through the shopping portal that will also earn you miles and points. And now you're double earning those miles slash points. For example, I'm pretty sure I've definitely done a deal where it was like six miles per dollar when it's usually three, which is great, especially when you're the planner of the trip and then you book everybody's coupons. This is a really great website for you to use to find things to do, but also get amazing deals on those things. Number three. Be a genuinely nice person and you may get free things as a result. So like I said, genuinely, don't be nice just to get free things. I'm just saying this as, you know, something I've learned over the years from my nice, good heart. I'm just happy to talk with people and I, I'm just a friendly person that sometimes things actually happen in my benefit. So I'm here to report that, yeah, being nice is worth it. <laughs> so I have two examples of where this worked out. And the first one was when my boyfriend and I were checking in to the Marriott Marquis in Washington, DC. We were so excited to be in Washington. It was the first time together to go and the hotel is so beautiful. So we were just being really nice to the front desk agent as we were checking in. You know, it's just be a nice person. Why do you need to be rude or angry or grumpy? Like just be nice, okay? 
So you know what ended up happening was the front desk agent was like, oh, you know, I'm going on vacation tomorrow and I'm feeling really nice. So you two can get M Club lounge access. And we're like, huh, very interesting. <laughs> We were feeling nice because we're on a vacation. She was feeling nice because she was going on vacation. And we ended up with an M Club Lounge access. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically Marriott's way of like saying thanks to people who are platinum or titanium members. There's free food and drinks and it's a beautiful lounge. You can pay to access it. I believe it's $50 the last time I checked. But, I mean, if you can become titanium or platinum, that would be really much better because you'd be getting it for free, but you know, to each their own. The second example is when my mom and I, we flew to Nantucket for a day trip and we knew there was a lot of things we wanted to do while we were there. And once we arrived to this very tiny airport, I mean, it was really small. We saw a woman who looked like she was part of the tourism board. We asked the tourism board lady if she can show us where the bus is. We wanted to go on the bus that will take us to the center of the town. It costs $3 per person. Also, we were interested in other things that she would recommend us to do while we're here for the day. And she spent like a good 10, 15 minutes giving us advice and we were just so thankful that someone was there to help. Like, I was just gonna Google stuff. But she was so helpful and then out of the blue, she's like, hey, like, here you go. And it was free tickets to go on that bus. What? What? Oh my, oh my God. Like, this was, this was unexpected. Like, oh my goodness. So we were just nice and she was feeling nice. And here we are with two free tickets. So <laughs> that's what happens when you're nice to people. Number four pay for only one meal a day. Now, I didn't discover this because I'm trying to be a penny pincher. I kind of found this out through my experiences in the past few years and I was like, oh yeah, that works. Okay, so basically, the way how you can actually end up doing this is if you somehow have breakfast covered. So you can either get breakfast for free through like a hotel status, like with Hilton Gold, I get breakfast for free. And also whoever's with me also gets breakfast. You can also get breakfast for free if it was included in your hotel rate. It's really helpful because when you wake up that day, you know you already have breakfast covered. You wake up and just go straight down to breakfast. It's a really nice way to live. Because usually the breakfast is a buffet and so I eat a lot, um, <laughs> that I end up kind of skipping lunch. So, yeah, that's kind of how I don't really need to go get lunch on, on trips. And then by the time it's dinner, I'm hungry, and so I will pay for that one meal. Now, this is not the case all the time, okay? You'll probably see me in one day, I might have been to a few places and ate at all of them. Um, it really depends. But if I'm in kind of in a longer trip, seven days, 10 days or more, this is a really good method to kind of keep your costs down. But if I'm on like a two day trip, I'm, I, I will have multiple times I'm eating just because it's part of my fun. I'm flexible when it comes to this, but I think it's a really great idea. You can splurge a little more on the dinner. You are going to look for the coolest restaurant and have a beautiful dinner over there. And you don't have to splurge on the dinner every day. You can have some regular dinners and then just have a really nice dinner the first night and the last night. Just think of a way to make this affordable for you. Number five, if you want the experience, the ambiance of an expensive restaurant, just grab drinks or even appetizers instead. This is a really great tip for you if you want to have the luxury elements, but you don't want to spend that luxury price tag. And the best example I can give you was when my mom and I went to Toronto last summer. We did a road trip there, by the way. And we decided to go to the Shangri-La Hotel. This is a hotel that is about $700 per night and more. We were in their beautiful lounge and ordered nice cocktails and had a great time. Um, but we didn't have to, you know, spend an arm and a leg to be there, you know? And I ordered a really cool cocktail called the Beehive and it's $20. What was really cool about it is that 
the honey that was inside of the drink actually came from the beehive on the property. So this is what I'm talking about, like the experience of being somewhere high end, you know, like where are you gonna find this anywhere else? Like you're gonna find experiences like this at higher end places. But guess what? I only paid $20. Um, I didn't pay an arm and a leg to get this beautiful experience. So I encourage you to do your research and see which places maybe have a beautiful rooftop view. You know, get those Instagram shots, have a drink, have some snacks, but you don't need to go pay so much money for your meal. And so I highly encourage you doing this. Number six is something that I just added after I've been doing research for my trip that's coming up tomorrow and it is to use social media and blogs to find inspiration and you may even stumble upon on deals. I'm so excited that I realized that this is something else I do because then I get to share it with you before I post this video. And um, basically at first what I did was I searched for things to do during COVID in Washington DC, um, something like that I did on Google. And I was specifically looking for kind of blog posts. I don't want to see from a very famous website what to do. I want to kind of see more local websites um, that are more on the ground and can tell me what's really going on. And so I found one and it was so helpful. And then I thought, okay, it would be really cool if I actually you know, went on Instagram and saw pictures that people were posting and maybe I'll find inspiration that way. And yes, I did. I found inspiration. I found some really cool places to go, some good places to eat. And I even got to get a coupon code for something that I actually found out about from a blog post. So I definitely recommend this as one of the ways to find inspiration and deals. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, I am so thankful. And I'm so happy to have you in this little community of ours. And I'll see you in another video.